I am looking at a picture that J.J. Reddick has put out of J.J. Reddick sitting next to, Vic, next to Victor Wembanyama. J.J. Reddick is 6'4". J.J. Reddick looks cartoonishly the way that Amin El Hassan looked photoshopped next to Antonio Davis, the way that Billy looked photoshopped next to Derrick Henry. An NBA player next to Victor Wembanyama looks like a tiny, tiny person. Just so that you understand in the room here, J.J. Redick is taller than anyone who works here. Not true. You're not 6'4". Here we go. Aren't you 6'4"? I'm 6'3". <laughs> I'm taller than you, though, Dan. You're not 6'4". What are we even doing? Okay. This is like... <laughs> everyone, knows, everyone knows. Everyone knows. Everyone knows I'm tallest. taller than J.J. Redick. He's, he's not that tall. No, it looks like Stu Gatz sitting next to Dan. I saw a video, guy, big guy. a photo of Shaq next to The okay. Rock yesterday. It was like, I don't know, it was one of those like Wait, Instagram things. Yeah, it was I, one I, of those I, Instagram things that's like, things that Shaq makes look tiny. And then it was just a bunch of pictures of him and Kevin Hart. And then we started getting to, here's Shaq next to The Rock. And it is crazy. I saw Chris Stapp's Porzingis and Yuki Sonoda next to each other. I, uh, that was crazy. I played craps once with J.J. Redick. Whoa! Taller than J.J. Redick. Tony, wow. you're good. Thank you. I also played craps with Virgil from WWF. Are you bigger than him? Yeah, but he's actually sneaky big. Do you actually get how to play sneaky craps? No. Yeah. It confuses me. You just sit around and people. Too much math. Really? You guys I, are confused I've by watched, craps? I've watched YouTube videos. I've never actually gone to a casino to play it because yeah. I'm intimidated by it. I've watched YouTube videos about it, and I still don't understand. It's a pretty what fast I would do game. If I were you at could, a craps you table. could lose your money very quickly there, uh, quicker than most tables, and you can make a lot very quickly. It sounds like something table. I would love. Like it sounds like a game that I would enjoy playing, and it, I just don't get it. It's the best game when it's cooking. There's no better gambling game than a hot table, cooking a up hot a crap. craps table. Mm. There's just nothing better. Put it on the poll at Lebetard Show. Is there anything better than a hot craps table? Shadow Divers is the name of the book I was telling you about that I read 20 years ago about mm. the difficulties in diving and sea exploration and the bends. I just, I'd recommend it because it's one of the better books I've read on any subject. I really enjoyed it. But we are talking to an expert here a Navy submarine expert at the end of this hour to find out what is happening with this submersive and get more informed than we are about this subject. A Navy submarine expert has to hate this vessel, right? Like there's no way that a Navy submarine expert thinks that a vessel that's run by a video game controller is a good idea. I think we're going to get more expertise than we have on this subject matter. I have the most expertise, and I have heard that the technology of the PS3 controller actually isn't the most startling thing about this. That's actually fairly common for it to be a wow. simple piece of technology that steers a submersible. I'm curious what the expert that you're talking about thinks, but he's probably agreeing with me or wrong if he disagrees. That's so. Probably you fancy yourself the greatest of the Titanic experts. I want to have a quiz off with you and Mike Ryan because Mike Ryan for two days has been saying that we don't need any other authorities on Titanic stuff, that he's the world's authority on Titanic information. Is it the, uh, the lights from Camping World? That the lights the from most... Camping World would alarm me the most. I can't believe that that can sustain the pressure. Yeah, you know what? It probably can't because that was what one of the lawsuits was about. And I do want to retract something I said in the local hour, which is that I wouldn't trust equipment bought at a company that sponsors a bowl game. Because then I remembered Lockheed Martin sponsors a bowl game. And like, I feel like their equipment is the equipment that's probably yeah. saving the submarine now. So, you know, bowl also, game sponsors. Also, the, the armed forces. Yeah. yeah. I feel yeah, like yeah, yeah. the products I use exclusively promote bowl games. Yeah. Yeah, Tostitos. I feel like I don't. You're I don't a big bad boy mower guy. <laughs> assume anything that's not Duke's a sponsor mayo bowl. Of a bowl game. Yeah. <laughs> uh, put it on the poll, please, Juju at Lebetard Show. Is your life in a good purchasing place if you're exclusively using the products that sponsor bowl games? Can we get Cardi B's thoughts here via video and audio on what it is that's happening with this uh, submersible? 
Okay, so one of the billionaires that's missing on the, on the water from that submarine ship, one of the billionaires, their stepson, is at a concert, right? At a Blink-182 concert. And people is like, um, well, what is he supposed to do? Be sad at the house? Is he supposed to go look for himself? Yes. You're supposed to be at the house sad. You're supposed to be crying for me. You're supposed to be right next to the phone waiting to hear any updates about me. You're supposed to be uh, counseling your mom and shit. Like, isn't it sad that you a whole fucking billionaire and nobody gives a f about you? Like, like you missing and motherfuckers ready to shake at concert. That's crazy. I'd rather be broke. I'd rather be broke than like and poor, but knowing that I'm love. Like, the stepson of said billionaire was indeed saying his father would want him to go enjoy the Blink-182 concert. Why is Cardi B uh, being held by some sort of cartoon skeleton? Well, it's not a skeleton it because the skin on. it has the skin yeah. and the muscles. It's the, oh, it has it's muscles, the vas mus muscular, muscular vascular system. Is that what it's called? Yeah. Any anatomy majors in here? They had that at, si at Sunset Place There's once. No the bones. human anatomy. The, yeah, the bodies. The bodies I saw it at it's the Tropicana. Those were real that. bodies. I know. But it has eyes and teeth. Yeah. So that's interesting. And he blinks too. And he's got a very devious look. Ooh, maybe it's because Blink-182 is why she did it. Solved it. Did you hear that Courtney's pregnant? Okay, so one of the billionaires that's missing... I don't know why Lewis did that. He thought he had comedic timing with Billy. He does not. Uh, Lewis, please don't play video when you're not asked to play video. I still don't think the audience knows what that skeleton thing is that you guys it's a, are It's a filter Dan, make your TikTok. own top five yeah. list of things that make you feel old. Yeah. We all know what we it already, is. We already covered this. That's a very clearly a TikTok uh, filter. Uh, Unless you actually think she exhumed one of the bodies from the bodies no, exhibit I, in I, Vegas. I, but why is she doing that while giving commentary giving on, her a hunk. on Blink the, 182. On the submersive. I would also shake at Blink 182 because Turnsell is opening and that's a bill. That's a once in a lifetime bill. Is it? I would shake so much at that concert. I went to a Blink 182 concert maybe 10 years ago. Me too. Which I feel like was their first reunion yes, last concert Yes, I was at the, on the ever. same tour. Really? Yes. Did you go to the one in West Palm Beach? No, I went to one oh. in Chicago and everyone I was with got drinking tickets except me. Were Is you? that the one where Travis was on the roller coaster drum set? I don't. Yes, I think it was. He was upside down drumming, Dan. It was the weirdest thing. It was crazy. Thing. It was kind of a weird show. I was so bothered by the Kourtney Kardashian thing. Really? Why? Yeah. Because she said, Travis, I'm pregnant, and she was showing for several months. Well, like, it, was a, it was just for us. It's not for Travis. It was a Just call, hold up a sign saying, everybody, I'm pregnant. It was a callback to one of their music videos where someone oh. in that crowd held up a sign okay. and said, Travis, I'm pregnant. Okay, but she's just doing that to sh tell everybody else. Which is I, just a very I mean, look at me, Louie thing. It's weird. Yeah, she's a celebrity. A Kardashian? Not like no. her. Yeah. And, and did she consider how Lord Bissick would consider any of this? Mm, none of his business. Do you think that she drew it up on a cardboard uh, cut out by herself? They have people for that. <laughs> no, they sh I saw pictures of her doing it. Oh, I'm sure you did. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Here, grab the Sharpie. Make it look that like she you're did coloring. It hers no, she came in and like maybe like crossed the T. Okay. The only thing that could have made these two, these two this tragedy of the Titanic submersible more entrenched in pop yet. culture That's would true. be if the stepson was at a Tom Sandoval concert. And saying that no that's where his, his stepfather <laughs> wanted him to be. <laughs> that's a Vanderpump joke, Dan. I think I would hold would in a fart it. the entirety of my yeah. time in this uh, sub. I probably would have perished already from constipation just because <laughs> I don't want to fart around people. How, it's how not do, something that I do. How do you think that's going? Like seeing how that bathroom situation was. Because like we're what, like three days in now or something? Like they obviously have all had to go to the bathroom. But you do don't want to be. food down there? Well, I'm. No. they might be they're like. Drinking the pee. I hope not. Uh, they do. It's go, sterile. They do go down with a. This certain is why amount it's a tragedy. Things. Like it is. Not this yet. is a horrible thing. It's not yet. Uh, they go down with a certain amount of items. They don't generally use the bathroom. I was actually uh, reading a Simpson writer's account of having done it because the Simpson people make so much money that they can afford things like like this. And he said, I think it's Mike Reese is his name, uh, he said that nobody used the bathroom in the 10 hours or whatever it took to get up and down. Do you think the stepson screamed, where are you, without I irony? <laughs> David Marquette is a retired Navy submarine captain. He's the author of Turn the Ship Around, a true story of turning followers into leaders. 
Thank you for your expertise here. Thank you for making the time for us. Before I ask you any of the questions I have, and I have many, what are the what are the questions that you have right now as an observer of this story, as uh, the world has been captivated by what is happening with this submersive that went down to uh, as a tourist attraction to check out the Titanic and now uh, can't be found, and there are reports that there are pinging sounds but we don't know who's alive. So what are the questions you have? And thank you for joining us, David. Yeah, well, I kind of I have two, two kind of sets of thoughts about this. One is about the immediacy of the rescue and the recovery. And they're either going to be recovered or they're not. And we're all, it's all going to play out in the next uh, 24 to 48 hours because that's really all the oxygen that they have left. But when I step back and think about it, Oh, the kind of things I'm thinking about are what are the roles of these highly innovative, experimental, pushing the edge of, of uh, what's possible with the laws of physics uh, in human advancing human endeavors. And if the company is, is going to not do the normal certification and regulation path, which they chose not to do because they want to be very innovative and fast moving, then what is the obligation on society to then come to their rescue. And how much money are we going to spend saving these people? And wouldn't that money at some point be better spent uh, providing fresh water, mosquito netting, vaccinations, and things that will save people's lives at a lower cost? I think it's those are the things we're going to eventually have to grapple with. Okay, the micro, the macro just was uh, felt a little unfeeling for the present predicament, but I understand why you're looking at the macro. OceanGate was warned of potential for catastrophic problems with Titanic's mission. Uh, experts inside and outside of the company warned of potential dangers and urged the company to undergo a certification process. Explain to me how dangerous what they're doing is for someone who doesn't understand. This is extremely dangerous. The pressure down there is 380 times what we feel here at the atmosphere. Now, you might think a spaceship going into space, oh, it's got to deal with the difference in pressure. That's simply one atmosphere. One inside the spaceship, zero outside. It gets a little pinhole leak and the air is rushing out. This is 380 times that. The slightest flaw like, for example, this thing is a carbon fiber tube with two titanium end bells bolted on. The slightest flaw, crack, because maybe it's gone up and down and up and down, and there have been some kind of fatigue crack in either the metal. Now, titanium is very resilient, which is why we use this, or the carbon fiber, or with the junction where one meets the other, or a bolt's got a little bit loose, or a little fitting. It's just got a tiny, tiny little hole because of rust or corrosion. That 380 times atmospheric pressure is going to come rushing in there. It, nature doesn't care. It's pressing on all sides of this thing, and any little uh, defect will be exploited in a sense. You've been 300 times the atmospheric pressure down there, correct? You've experienced that. Can you tell me how claustrophobic that is or what we're talking about there? Actually, no. We, uh, in, in our submarines, we don't have a need to go that deep. Our submarines aren't designed to go that deep. They're 10 times deeper than we would go in our submarines. As, as a person though, you don't really feel the pressure. It's not like being on an airplane. You're sitting in, but, but you do feel very claustrophobic. You're in there with four of your best friends and it's uncomfortable. There are no seats. You're exhaling carbon dioxide. You're inhaling oxygen. The oxygen levels are starting to go down. You're starting to get headaches. The carbon dioxide levels are building up. You're poisoning yourself in, in essence. You're getting headaches, then nausea, confusion, and finally, you'll uh, asphyxiation and poisoning from carbon dioxide. So it's not comfortable at all. There's a little tiny, basically, they have a, a baggie for a toilet behind a curtain, and they turn the music up when someone goes uh, needs to go to the bathroom. Hey, David, it's Mike. Um, say they actually locate this submarine here in the next couple of hours. Then what? <laughs> do they yeah. have any way to actually bring it up? Because that process seems even more complicated than trying to locate the thing. Yeah, you're you're right. But we we there is a system. Uh, the U.S. Navy has a system designed almost exactly for this. And what it is, it's a long cable on a big giant spool. 
And it's designed to be taken apart into different parts so it fits on these big C-17 airplanes. Those, it, it normally lives in San Diego. They've been sent and they've arrived uh, in Newfoundland. And they'll take that and do a temporary mount on one of these big uh, oil well servicing ships that can then drive it out and be standing by in the location. But the problem is you drop this cable, you got to get that hook onto the submarine. And so that's probably one of those remotely operated vehicles with an arm can do that. But that's still pretty dicey because currents are moving things around. The hook is swaying. It's two and a half miles now. But we got to find them first. Otherwise, we don't even get to, we don't even get to step two. What do you make of the sounds being heard or reported about uh, that they are hearing tapping down there? What does that mean? Is it them? Yeah, it, it's possible. Uh, the, the oceans are noisy. There's whales, there's shrimp, there's waves, there's other ships passing by. So we're trying to sort out well, what could be from them and what's just all the rest of this noise. When we hear something, click, bang, 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 bang. That's man-made. Fish don't generally make metal on metal sounds like that. So it's possible it's them. The ROV went over there. So now we're looking at a much smaller area, uh, but we really can't see much. It's pitch black. The ROV's got lights, cameras. Someone's looking at a screen up on a ship, driving around, trying to drive back and forth in a pattern and see if they can see anything. We didn't see anything. So we're sort of back to square one. Would you ever go down in that thing? No, uh, a, a couple of reasons. One is if you think about exploration and crossing a continent or, or going up a mountain, for me, there's a lot of physical, there's physical effort, physical stamina. Exploration here, I'm, I'm not trying to detract from what these people are doing, but it's really more about the vessel than the people is if you can just tolerate sitting uncomfortably for eight hours, then then you just take a ride. So for me, that's not that interesting. And then visiting the Titanic, it doesn't have I mean, it's a graveyard for 1500 people. It, it doesn't really have a draw for me. How about the idea that the certification for this is not something that you would advise, period? Like this is would you advise this for anybody? People got to make their own decisions and how they want to live their life. And, but I think there are risk mitigation, mis risk mitigating techniques that can be used to reduce the risk of something like this. For example, instead of just going out and going deep, going out and, and sending, sending it deep and then bringing it back without any people on board or going out and just go, and going in shallow water and just going down for a hundred feet and making sure everything works and then coming back up and then loading all like with just a pilot and then come back up, load everybody and then go down. So I think there are some like in the Navy, we've learned over a long period of time how to mitigate risk so that when we finally do go out and do these risky operations, we've done everything possible to find all possible problems and get rid of them before we go out there. Does it seem to you like this company, OceanGate, did that, given some of the details that have come out in lawsuits and other news reports since this uh, accident happened? Yeah, I don't see evidence in the timeline and the way they've talked about it that they are that they have done the kind of things that we would do on the nuclear submarine before we would go to sea. That doesn't mean they didn't do them. It's just I haven't seen any evidence in terms of the way the CEO talks about it or uh, the timeline for these these tourists as they sign up and go out. What do you make of the uh, PS3 controller aspect of it? I've seen a lot of debate on social media from people saying that I would never get on a submarine that's controlled by a PS3 controller. And then the rebuttal to that being like, well, it's a pretty simple technology. Maybe you'd be surprised that similar technology exists on other craft as well. Yeah, I... The, I mean, there's billions of dollars being spent in the uh, gaming industry, and 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 so they're making advances in these areas and a lot of these areas, like the human machine interface, faster than it's going on in the military. I don't really have a problem with using a thirty-five dollar controller and not a thirty-five thousand dollar controller if you have four of them on the submarine, because that controller is not designed 
to be so robust, it's going to work in all conditions all the time. And if you really need to rely on it, then you need four of them. It doesn't work. Unplug it, plug in the next one kind of a thing. So when we build a submarine, if we need one, we put on two. If we need two, we put on three. It's always about redundancies, backups, and having alternate plans. Given what you know, explain to me the differences between this vessel and a vessel that you have used. A submarine properly trained by the military to endure conditions not this deep. So first of all, we have a nuclear reactor, which has a lot of power. We have a giant propeller. So we leave port on our own power, drive out to sea, go deep where the, quote, bad guys don't know where we are. And within a matter of days, we can be anywhere, anywhere in the world. This is a submersible has needs to be towed out by a mothership and it has little propellers that can then maneuver it down to the Titanic and come back. Uh, this is designed to go underwater for maybe a half a day, a few hours, maybe a couple of days. We're, we're underwater for 30, 60, 90 days. I was underwater once for 87 days. So it's a much bigger program. We have 130, 140 people. It doesn't feel claustrophobic to us, but fundamentally you're operating a machine in the corrosive pressure of the ocean. And we always would say submarining is safe as long as you remember it's dangerous. Well, you say that, but David, this thing sounds like you're looking at it and saying this is total insanity that these people were doing this, that anyone was profiting off it or anyone was even trying it. Yeah, but Dan, I I look at a lot of things that people do. I look at people, a guy climbed the face of the Iger in three hours. That's total insanity. People driving an F1 car 200 miles to like... I, I'm not sure I can judge for They're them. They're very safe these days. Yeah, I got it. I got it. Um, they got to choose. And I appreciate from the human race, from the level of the human race, we need people who are willing to go out and do things before they're 100% safe or we never go, we never get to the second valley. David, stay there for a second. I've got a thousand more questions, please. I'm going to come back with you after this. <laughs> David, I want to go back to the very first question that you talked about in the macro, which is, should we be spending any of this money to save these people? I have not heard that coldness anywhere, but I understand it. And what does this cost? Let's start there. What does a rescue mission like this cost? Yeah, I, I don't know, Dan. I don't know if it's cold. I mean, we got to make hard decisions in life. You got a one heart, two patients. It's, it's not cold to make a decision. It's, it's we're saving one. So in our brains, humans often neglect what we call the opportunity cost. So the, mo the money that we're, if we're spending money here, what are we not spending it on? This is a very costly mission. There have been three, four, five airplanes out there flying since Sunday. The Navy has flown this equipment out there. Now, at the same time, that's what we do. We have Coast Guard, and that's what these people are designed to do. It's good, just from a, a cold calculating point of view, it's good to exercise the system. It's good to load it up and check it out and make sure, can we talk to the right people in the right places on the right commercial uh, companies? Do we have a map? Do we know where these ships are at any one time? If something happens, let's say, Tomorrow it happens with a, an American submarine. Well, we've got the system in place to that it'll it'll help in the future. So I'm not I don't think we should spend no money, but at some point, and it'll probably be once we're pretty sure that the oxygen runs out, is we 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 gotta decide how much are we gonna spend because we're not spending it on other things. What do you think right now is happening? down there like do you have just can your expertise lend any additional insight to us when you're talking about it can be anything if one crack this this is not intended to be down there for multiple days so it would appear based on your expertise and what you're saying that it would be extremely unlikely for for them to be able to survive where we already are never mind where we'll be 18 hours from now yeah i Generally, the, the, the problem occurs as you're increasing pressure. When things are in a chain, 
Generally, the problem occurs when you're increasing pressure, when you are uh, changing system conditions. Once you get down there and, and everything is stabilized, it, it, I'm not worried that the thing's going to sort of suddenly rupture now that it's down there for three or four days. I think that's probably okay. It's in a static situation. What I worry about was during that hour, 45 minutes, it's making that descent. The pressure is gradually increasing and it hasn't gone that deep in a long time. So now there's some component or is a fitting. There's something that wasn't quite connected quite right. And, and we get to a certain pressure, pop, it, bang, it breaks loose, and then uh, the, the, the vessel floods, and it's game over. Let's say everything's still intact. These are people who have gone down there with no training. Can they still be alive? Yeah, uh, they're basically passengers. I, I don't think there's a lot of training that you need. What the, the only thing they really need to do is bang on the side and try and minimize their breathing so they extend their oxygen as long as possible. The people who are down there are not naive people. Uh, there's the CEO of the company, a couple of billionaires who've done this exploration before, uh, the French pilot who's been down to the Titanic three times. These people are not, they're not just, they're not like tourists, like, hey, we like the dumb guy with a hat. Like these people know what they're doing. So they would not be susceptible to panic. So I'm confident that if they're still alive, they're doing everything they can. What is there to see on the Titanic the fourth time that you missed the first three? Well, well here's what they're trying to do. They're saying, look, if we can study the Titanic, we're going to see how, it, how fast it, it uh, corrodes away, what's attacking it. Uh, we can we, we can get a sense of how warming is affecting the oceans and the organisms in the ocean. And that's laudable. But in order to fund that, what we're going to do is we're going to piggyback it by sending some rich people down. We're going to charge them two hundred fifty thousand dollars each. And that uh, tourism industry will then support the development and the building of vessels that the scientists can use. So it's it's a good um, it's a good cause. What would be your certification process for something like this? Certification starts with design. Do you have the systems in place? Uh, ha has the thing been tested? What computer models have we sent through the thing? Then do you take it to operations. How are we operating it? Not so much the tours that are just riding for the day, but the, the people around it. What's the operational schedule look like? If we have it in port all winter because the weather's bad, when the first day of good weather breaks, what do we do? We do test everything at the pier. Then we're going to go in shallow water. We'll test it in the bay. Then we're going to go in deep water with nobody on it. Like, what are those programs that we're going to do? And then lay that out. Let somebody else check your not like improve your thinking, make it better. But these guys, again, it's it's a commercial en en entity, so all those things cost money. The more time you're you have the the submarine that you're not using it for revenue generating tourist trips is in a, it's like an airplane sitting at the at the gate it's not making money david i just want to know what you're telling your fellow submarine captains about this in the most honest moments are you saying what is wrong with these bad crazy people now we generally don't say that but we, we we're we're like yeah they're dead uh, because I, I'm looking at this, you respect the ocean. You, res you, you, just, you just got done saying, do you understand how dangerous this is? Like every time you go underwater without the capacity to breathe for yourself, you understand how dangerous it is. And this, it seems to me, I don't want to put words in your mouth, that this kind of exploration, while you think it a worthy cause, uh, you also think that this is a bit foolhardy because it's almost impossible to guarantee at those depths that we have the human equipment to know what we're doing. Yeah, and I, I think foolhardy is a little strong, but for example, the company, it was after the accident happened, the company's running around they're claiming they're not getting responses from the governments aren't ha helping as much as they could, which I'm not sure about. But look, you're four years too late sending that email. You figure all that out before. <laughs> you figure that out when you're sitting at the pier and the sun is shining, not when your ship is 13,000 feet underwater. And, and so I think there are things that we could have done better, the company could do better to mitigate these kind of risks.
Is there an element about this story that has shocked you the most? Can you hold one second? Yeah, I have. I had an 1130 commit. So I, we um, can we wrap it up on this? Yes, one? yes. This is the last yep. question. Go ahead, Jessica. Uh, I'll ask it again. We can do a pickup. Yeah. Is there an element of this story that has shocked you the most? This may sound uncaring. Warning. The thing that shocked me the most is how much interest there is. We got five people in a submarine. Meantime, two years ago, we had 50 people in an Indonesian submarine lost. All of them died. We have 500 people on a migrant ship trying to get to Europe sank, probably dead. Uh, but, but I've been on the news 30 times in the last 24 hours. There just seems to be a whole lot of interest. And I don't know if it's the Titanic or, oh, we got a couple billionaires or we're pu people pushing the edge of the envelope, but they're just, it's, it's unbelievable all over the world. There's, there's just unbelievable interest in the story. Uh, thank you, David. I appreciate your time, sir. Dan, thanks so much. Try and make me look smart. All right. Uh, it will not be hard. Uh, one of the things that he said there, because for this to be the most shocking part of it, that all of us are suddenly interested in this. Somebody writes in to me, Dan is so woefully out of touch with the common man and doesn't know it. Nothing about paying 250 k to take a sub to see the Titanic wreckage is relatable, and most people aren't seeing their vacation fears realized when they hear about this story. Wait, did you say that? No, I did not say that. Of course I did not say that. I was that. like, dang, I he's think, right. I think we can all connect with the idea of oxygen running out of being lost at sea. I think the reason this has captivated everybody more, he's right, he's right when he talks about, he said 500 people, 300 people outside Pakistan trying to get to freedom, sinking at sea. Yes, that's a greater horror with more people, but anyone listening to this can be captivated by the idea of stuck with three or four other people at the bottom of the sea and air is running out. And that's not final even though he's saying yeah they're dead it's not final we're imagining they're still alive possibly rolling stone is reporting pinging sounds and we're hoping I, I don't think peter travers is on the beat i think they probably aggregated yeah. that story yeah rolling stone isn't who i it turned came to from, first it came from like a news. military memo i think there's a few things at play because i think the last point that he made is extremely important in terms of things that we render newsworthy is like we being the media like there has been so much time and attention spent on this missing submersible because i think it scratches an itch that a lot of people are genuinely curious and mystified about these are people that have decided to put their lives at extreme risk to do something that they did not have to do this isn't a life or death situation you have to go on this vessel they are doing it because they can because they have the money to do it they're putting themselves at risk for it and it involves one of the most like iconic yeah. things of uh, the last century, yeah, which is me. an unsinkable ship, the Titanic, something that there's been one of the highest grossing movies in history. That's still about. claiming so lives. A human interest element in that, which he mentioned. And then there's also the aspect of like, none of us could ever do this, even if we wanted to. And people have the amount of, of wealth that they can do a tourist trip to the unsinkable Titanic just because they can, and now they're missing. It, it is incredibly uncommon and strange, which is, I think, why it's getting so much attention right now. Yeah, we've been long fascinated with uh, the, the Titanic for several reasons. It was this indestructible thing that was obviously famously destroyed and, and several thousands lives lost. But uh, I can't get over what a nihilist that submarine captain was. He was just very matter-of-fact about everything, and he was a sub-captain. What was he? The captain of the USS Nietzsche? Oh. Man, you worked a long way to set that joke. You interrupted up. me like you tried to interrupt me like four times for that. So yeah, you yeah. didn't take the signal though. I, I powered through. <laughs> he said one thing though that is something that should be on T-shirts that he should sell, which is submarining is safe as long as you know it's dangerous. It's a bar. Wow. That was really <laughs> another profound. another bar was them billionaires that he led off with. Oh. And I didn't hear that. I didn't hear that one. Yeah. I mean, he yeah, I didn't hear the F word. He basically yeah. said it. He yeah, said there's no F word. Yeah. That they're dead too. Uh, Jessica, are you aware that you powered through the entire uh, entirety of that segment, waving a tiny uh, little plastic hand at me? It did make me feel stronger to have this in my hand, actually, the whole time. Hmm.